Monkey, Zombies, and the COVID Vaccine, a thought experiment. Have you been wondering why the COVID virus is so persistent? How it seems to have spread so successfully to every corner of the planet? It's because the virus is perfectly designed to do what it needs to do to transmit from one person to the next by spreading to the lungs, stimulating a cough, traveling to the air, and landing on the face of an unsuspecting new host. It's a dastardly deed. But what is important to understand is that the host, that is the infected person, is contagious for only about 10 days at the most. While there are some exceptions to this rule, even sick patients become non-contagious after a while. So this is like a time bomb for the virus. If it does not break out, if it does not escape from jail within those 10 days, it dies in the first host without any chance of spreading to the next one. Thus, during this 10 day period, the virus is desperate to find someone else who is not wearing a mask, who is less than six feet away, and who has not been vaccinated. That is the perfect new host. If that person shows up, the virus will leap directly into their nose or their mouth, make a new home, and go on to live another day. COVID must transmit directly from one person to the next because it cannot survive out on its own in the world. Like a zombie that constantly needs fresh material, the virus needs a new host. Like a monkey that grabs the new branch before it lets go of the old one, the virus needs to find that new branch within 10 days. Otherwise, it dies in place. So that leads me to my thought experiment. What if every person in the world, if all 7 billion of us, could find a private place to be all alone for the next two weeks? It doesn't really matter where. Your bedroom, an abandoned car, an elevator shaft, or an old shoebox. It doesn't really matter where, just so long as you stay by yourself. In other words, in quarantine. If we all did that at the same time, at the end of the two weeks, the pandemic would essentially be over. Because everyone who had the virus would no longer be contagious, and the virus, remember, cannot survive on its own. Essentially, we would have deprived the zombie of any fresh material, would have denied the monkey its next branch. Then when we all climbed out of our holes in the ground, we would be stepping into a COVID-free world. I know what you are thinking. This scenario really isn't even possible. I mean, who wants to live in their bedroom for two weeks? Actually, there are a few holes in this plan, and that's why I call it a thought experiment. You just have to use your imagination. And I am just making a single point. The key is to deny the virus a new host. The virus needs you to get to the next person. And the only way to prevent that is to follow the recipe. Wear a mask, keep your distance, and get the vaccine. Especially the vaccine. It's not exactly the same as living in an elevator shaft, but it's the next best thing. So if we can follow this recipe, it will have the same impact as our thought experiment. The virus will not be able to spread and life can go back to normal. But what if a large chunk of our population decides not to get vaccinated? Recent surveys show that about 25% of Americans are planning not to be vaccinated. An unvaccinated group of this size would guarantee the virus enough fresh material that it could continue to simmer pretty much everywhere, spinning off new variants that threaten even those who have been vaccinated. And life would certainly not return to normal. So we all need to do this together. The COVID pandemic reminds me of the zombie apocalypse. It is an otherworldly invasion that has turned our lives upside down and makes us not sure who we can even trust. But in truth, it is actually a world war. A foreign invader has breached our defenses and is running amok through our communities. An invisible microbe, yes, but a foreign invader nonetheless. And I am not exaggerating. More Americans have now died in one year from COVID than all the years of World War II combined. In that challenge, we all work together to defeat our enemies. We rationed food and fuel, our men went overseas to storm the beaches, and our women went to work in the factories. Rosie the Riveter was the national symbol of shared sacrifice. We aligned, we coalesced, all on the same team. And in the end, we emerged victorious. The same is true of the pandemic. It's a shared collective response, and everyone must do their part. Not for ourselves, but for each other. If we do this together, we can prevail. In this war, our sacrifice is to wear a piece of cloth over our face, keep our distance, and get a vaccine, which is incredibly safe, phenomenally effective, and the single best way to defeat our enemy. 
We just have to make sure that the zombie does not get any fresh material and that the monkey cannot find the next branch. Then we win and life goes back to normal. The vaccine you take is not just for you, it's for everyone. Hi, I'm Nate Link and I hope you were enlightened by this video essay. For more video essays on evidence-based politics and science, please join my YouTube channel, Nate Link MD, and read my book, The Ailing Nation, winner of two National Book Awards and available online at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thank you.